In the last video I talked about the gear that I use for soldering for hardware reverse engineering and in this video I will introduce the other smaller tools that I use for hardware reverse engineering. And as you can see I organize my smaller tools in these little VHS tape boxes and you can see here I have tools for JTAG, for software defined radios, for smart cards which also includes uh, phone sim cards, then for SPI, I2C, uh, logic analyzers, NAND chips and EEPROM chips. Then here we got the DMA stuff mainly PCI and Firewire. Here is the RFID stuff. In this box we have various jumpers, banana cables and other cables and here we have the USB stuff. We'll start looking at the USB stuff. Basically you can see there's a whole bunch of different USB devices in here. Let's start with the device that everybody knows. It's the HEC5 rubber ducky. You can see it here. It basically looks like a USB device but inside there's a microprocessor and when you connect this USB stick to a computer, it will act like a keyboard. And then this is basically the same thing. It's just a Chinese version of this, which is much, much, much cheaper. Next up is a USB condom. You can use it to cut the data lines of USB devices that you connect. In some cases, when you're analyzing a device, the device itself needs power, but you don't want the device in case it's active to also connect to your computer, for example. Then you can use this USB condom and it will cut the data connection, but still gives power to the device. Okay, next up, these here are regular USB sticks. The next thing we have here is a USB multimeter. It simply displays the current that is flowing through the USB connection. And you can also um, set it to a mode where it acts like a USB condom, so you have power throughput, but no data throughput. Then here on the top left, we have various adapters. And these are simply two Wi-Fi adapters. Next up, we look at SPI and I2C, Logic Analyzer, NAND and IPROM stuff. So here we have two Bus Pirates. One is the three version, the other is the Bus Pirate 4. And the Bus Pirate does SPI and I2C and also some logic analyzing. But now I mainly use the TO Tampa board, which also does the same thing as the Bus Pirate. But I was buying the Bus Pirates previously because there are more tutorials on them and it's easier to get started. The TU Tampa board is basically this FTDI development board in a nicer package, which has connectors nicely laid out. Next up are these things here. These are all connectors with which you can connect different chips. This is for SOP8. When you have it unsoldered, you can put it in here. This is for for the chips that have lags, you can snap them in here. This is for a PLC20 chip, SOP8. What I like to use most in case of SOP8 are these clips, which you can simply clip onto the chip without having to desolder it. Then next up is this. This is for TSOP48, which some routers use for their flash storage, which is mostly NAND. And then you can and desolder the chip and then put it in here, snap it, snap it close and then you can connect it up to an FTDI board and there is software for some of the, the NAND flashes which then allows you to read out the NAND. These two here are for the same purpose, to read out TSOP48 chips but these are like the Pomonas to, to clip onto the chip so you don't have to desolder the chip. Last but not least, we have this small logic analyzer here. It's a, I believe a six channel 
logic analyzer and it works well with the open source SIGROC software. But personally, I don't find myself using much logic analysis yet. Next up, we look at JTAG. Here we only have two devices. First, the JTAGulator, which allows you to figure out the pin layout of a JTAG device in case you, you find uh, pins that you suspect are JTAG, but you don't know which pin corresponds to which JTAG signal, you can hook up the JTAGulator and it will sort of brute force all combinations of pins and then give you the combination that is correct. You can get the basic functionality of the JTAGulator with an Arduino, there is JTAG enum for it. But the problem with the JTAG enum project is that you have to do the level conversion yourself Arduino is running at five volts. I mean, the JTAGulator is expensive and if you're starting out, you may think, hey, if I can do it with an Arduino, it's much cheaper. But the hours you will waste with connecting up cables and trying to get the level conversion correct and stuff like that. I mean, you learn a lot of things doing that, but yeah, it's really convenient. You can change the level in software and be done. So. This is my, my go-to tool to finding out the mapping of JTAG. Then the next thing is the bus blaster, but I basically don't use it anymore. I use the tier jumper board because it also does JTAG and is very well integrated into open OCD. Next up, we have the cables box, which is just a bunch of banana cables and probe cables and also jumper cables to hook up the aforementioned JTAG and SPI interfaces and whatnot. So you can hook this up here, plug this into this device and then stake the other end into your router and whatnot. Next thing is smart cards and SIM interfaces. The main tool here is the SIM trays. I actually have a three printed case for it here. This is how it looks with the case opened. It allows you to mitim the communications between a smart card and the device and a SIM card is a smart card. For this to work you have to put the SIM card that you want to use in here. Then you can use one of these cables that you put in here that you then put into the device. And this works then like this. You connect this via USB to the computer and this SIM card communicates with this end here, but everything that's going down the line is sent to the computer. And in theory, if you write your own custom firmware for this, you can also mitten what is being sent from the SIM card to here. So you can um, intercept some signals and change them. Obviously, if you want to use a full-size smart card and not a SIM card, with this device you have to use an adapter. In this case, I have the Rebel SIM adapter in which you can plug your smart card. And then on the other end, you also need an adapter here. And then you can use this end here like your smart card over here and plug it into the device that you want to analyze the communication of. Next, I also have a bunch of fully programmable smart cards. Some of them have an 80 mega processor, some of them have a PIC uh, microprocessor on them and you can fully program them. There's an open source operating system, SOSE, which you can flash on these and then you can have full control over what the card is sending and then you can mess with devices any way you like. Next up, I have test SIM cards from Sysmocom. These are SIM cards for telephone networks. Then these two are storage smart cards. And somewhere in here, there's also a GNU PG smart card. And these are other programmable smart cards. Some miscellaneous smart card stuff I have is a smart card reader, USB, which you can connect to the computer. And also it's not really smart card, but it's cards, it's magnet cards. It's a 
magnet card, stripe reader and writer. Then as the last wired interface types we have DMA. In this box are some FireWire adapters. And these boards here are for the Slot Screamer project by Joe Fitz, which also allow you to run DMA attacks via USB 3 in this case. But I also have a proper Spartan SP605 board with which you can do DMA attacks with the software by Ulf Frisk. Sorry, in case I butchered your name. Now we're leaving the wired communication realm and go into RFID stuff. Proxmark, it's an RFID tool which, which you can read RFID tags or NFC tags. I have a bunch of NFC tags here. Also here, tags. Then I have different antennas here. I have some prox cards in here. And this is basically an open source hardware reader, which you can also flexible uh, hook into to design your own um, stuff which, with which you can do malicious attacks on NFC. And this is a regular NFC reader. My latest edition is this device by Kasper Oswald. It's the Chameleon. It basically allows you to clone a card onto this device or you can also pro program the microprocessor on here. And it has a little coin cell here so you can operate this mobily. Uh, the Proxmark you can also operate it mobily with this power adapter but it looks a bit suspicious. This one here you can if you carry it correctly and break this off here then you probably can get away with this looking like a regular card. Then next up is software defined radio stuff. This box basically contains an RTL software defined radio USB dongle. Then it also has a yardstick one and an uber tooth in it with all the antennas. Then it has here a bunch of different daughter boards for my USRP SDR which you can see here it's basically just a box and you can connect antennas to it and then connect this device via USB to your computer and then you can make this box send any radio frequency that you like also receive any radio frequency that you like and I also use this to run my own GSM base station. I deliberately cut out MISC stuff like, like this here that I have for, for various projects that I haven't started or haven't finished yet. But basically, if you want to start out, I'd recommend get a tier tamper board. It has SPI, I2C and JTAG, which are the main interfaces that you want to use. And if you want to get into a more specific field like smart cards, SDR or RFID, then the devices that I showed you here work great for me. And I think those are the essential devices that you need to have in order to get anything done. But you also need to learn how to work the devices. And that's why knowledge is really key here and not uh, gear. I mean, I'm basically showing off all my gear here, but you really need to spend time to learn how different interfaces work so you can properly use your devices. And if you want to do reverse engineering and also attacking devices, you have even to go a step beyond the regular usage of the devices. You have to make them do things that they are not intended for. In case, for example, with, with smart cards, you have to learn how to um, program your own processor on a smart card in order to send malicious data to devices to fuss the smart card stack. The same you have to do for NFC if you want to a crash an NFC device or a Bluetooth even a device then you have to uh, really learn the protocol in order to attack it. So if you're just trying to start out and you just watch this video then I thank you for watching this video um, but don't be afraid you don't need all the stuff. This is basically 
what you need to do everything that's out there. So if you want to only specialize in a specific area, you don't need everything, you just need parts of it. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and goodbye.